And last month's heat was not an exception. The report says temperatures have been rising since January. Joining me to discuss is Environment Canada's senior climatologist, Dave Phillips. Dave, good morning to you. So let's much. cut straight to it. Why is it so much hotter this year, not just here in Canada, but globally? Well, you know, certainly the, the news is not surprising and shocking at all. We had the warmest summer uh, globally, a stick of thermometer in the planet. We had the warmest June ever. July was the warmest month of any month uh, in, in, uh, in history. And then August has, has followed that. And then finally now in September. So this uh, creates, a, of course, a pattern. Um, I think the, there's a lot of sort of residual heat in the, in the lakes and the land and the oceans. The oceans are hot tubs out there, Marcia, and, and they retain that heat longer. And so they find they give it up and it just warms the air. And, and so we see the temperature rise because of it. Of course, we've had after absence of seven years an El Nino in the, in the South Pacific, uh, in the area around on uh, the shores of uh, Ecuador, Peru. But this El Nino is not just the little garden variety type. This is enormous. The size of it is stretching right out to the international dateline and, and to, the, um, uh, to the Western Pacific. It's, uh, to be an El Nino, you need half a degree warmer than normal. This is three, three and a half degrees warmer than normal. So the oceans are hot tubs and we're seeing the result of this and, and not surprising. I mean, it is uh, clearly what is surprising, I think alarming, is the degree by which September, for example, has been warmer than the, the previous Septembers. I mean, it broke, I mean, in a, globally, you break records by a hundredth of a degree. I mean, this particular September, globally, was a half a degree warmer than the previous warmest September, which I believe was 2020. So it just continues. And Marcia, come on, let's announce it right now. The world is going, this is going to be the warmest year on record, 2023. We'll have lots to say about it, but clearly, stick a thermometer, it's well done. It is from January through December, we can say right now, there's nothing. Unless an asteroid hit the planet or a volcano erupted somewhere, we're not going to cool it off. And you know, it, it's funny that sometimes we think, well, the world is behaving differently than Canada. Not. I mean, Canada's the second largest country in the world. We had, in spite of uh, what people in, in Ottawa and Montreal and Toronto thought about the summer, this was the warmest summer on record in Canada with 76 years, and we don't have the records out for September. But Marcia, I looked at the values from all major cities in Canada, and September was anywhere from, I mean, five or six degrees warmer than normal in Man in Winnipeg to, to almost two and a half degrees warmer than normal in, in St. John's. And so this is clearly going to be one of the warmest Septembers on record. And Marcia, a week into October, and we're still seeing this warmth. I mean, Ottawa had two days in a row of temperatures above 30. They've never seen an October with one day above 30. So, hey, this, this scorching torrential or uh, heat is, is happening globally in Canada, and it's unrelenting. It's just not going to stop. And one climate scientist at Berkeley, you may have read this, Dave, said that this is absolutely gobsmackingly bananas and that's coming from a scientist <laughs> so my question to you then and, and you've already sort of touched on this when people start wondering are we in for a milder winter is there anything to cool things down that you see well happening? i mean as they say i mean you could have something hit the planet i suppose but but no it's it's all this residual heat it's not going to give it up uh, away so i mean we clearly are not canceling winter in canada we've never done that uh, but it clearly looks like with El, particularly El Nino, we know from history tells us when you have a, a, an El Nino, just, a, a, just a, a, an ordinary running El Nino, it tends to be warmer in Canada. When it's intense and large, my gosh, it's almost like a done deal. I mean, I think this will be likely to be a, 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 you know, a, a tame kind of, a, a soft and open kind of a, of a winter. Now, not every day, Marcia, no. I mean, the polar vortex will make runs at Canada, but with those warm El Nino breezes blowing across the, the country, it will help to keep that Arctic air well to the north. And we'll see a few days, you wish you were somewhere else, but, but clearly it will be, I certainly think, the best money us. It'll be another mild um, winter. And we'll continue to add to, to what the globe is seeing. And we can't even grow ice in Antarctica in the wintertime. My gosh. And... Um, 
and we've seen it in the in the north too. So my gosh, that the world's on fire for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I was also seeing this morning Mont Blanc in the Alps has shrunk by over two meters. Dave Phillips, thank you so much. Really appreciate you being with us.